to those of us who are living, we have an obligation to live our lives to the absolute fullest. Life is one big tug of war, and you don't win that tug of war by pushing them. You have to pull them. And a lot of times, you have to pull yourself through life. This morning, I did not want to get up, so I had to pull my ass out of bed. But guess what? The more and more I got into that run, each step into that run, I started gaining more and more confidence. But to gain that confidence, you have to be willing to pull yourself out of bed, pull yourself out of the funk. Pull yourself out of whatever life is throwing at you to gain that confidence. By the time the run was over, I was like, you motherfucker, I once again beat your ass. You gotta be willing to find the confidence. Stay in the fight, stay in the war, stay in the battle, over your mind. And so I've been intrigued with, can you be committed to the process of what you do without being emotionally attached to the result of what you do? Because a lot of people can be committed to the process of what they do if the results don't change. But the moment the result or the outcome changes of what they're chasing, they shut it down or they quit simply because the result changed. So can we be committed to the process of what we do, but not emotionally to the result of what we do, understanding every day I get up and give everything I got to everything I'm a part of simply because this is who I am. Like the only thing I need every day of my life is 86,400 seconds, that's it. Like I don't need some reward, like I don't, I don't need, the only thing I need is breath in my body and I'm gonna flat out go and get it. But remember that the moments when life tells you yes aren't the ones that define you. The moments that really matter are the moments when life tells you no. That's what I want to focus on today. When life tells you no, ask yourself honestly, what am I capable of? And once you know the answer, don't be afraid to let everyone else know it too. Find a way to keep things in perspective. That doesn't make the painful moments any less painful, but it does mean you don't have to live forever in the pain. You don't have to live forever in that no. Because if you know what you're capable of, if you're always prepared and you keep things in perspective, then life has a way of turning a no into yes. Betray your destiny and see how long it takes you to be drowning in a storm. It'll happen immediately and, and of course it will because what, what's calling you to be your best is exactly the thing that's pushing you forward to manifest yourself most fully in the world. It's what you need. You run away from that, the boat's gonna start to rock very, very quickly. Well, how, what does that mean? Well, what else would come out of chaos? You know, if you, if you fall apart and then you put yourself back together, what is it that comes back out? Well, at least you're in better shape than you were before, you know? And, and then maybe you do that 20 times in your life, or 50 times, and you do it voluntarily. That's not my problem. The problem is when the adversity struck, they didn't know how to respond. In other words, when adversity strikes, for some reason, people think they rise to the occasion. You don't rise to the occasion, you revert back to your training. Meaning your core, your essence, who you are as a person. When that first in opposition strike, you can't turn it to the beast. You already gotta be the beast. So it's a very brief life. And whatever is of paramount importance to this life, must happen at the earliest, not day after tomorrow, isn't it? It must be today. So, the life process doesn't wait. You need to understand, your life is just a certain combination of time and energy. Energy we can manage.
and who cannot manage. A lot of you are trying to find inspiration and motivation with a depressed mindset. You're depressed because you're not doing with yourself. You don't find inspiration by not living in the grip of life. You need to live in the grip of life to find inspiration. Put challenges in front of yourself. When you put a challenge in front of yourself and you attack it, that's when you find inspiration. Try to be 10% better than you were last week. Quitting guarantees the failure. Once you quit, it, it, it rules out any chance of succeeding. The mere waking up every day, putting the next foot in front of the next foot, at least keeps you in the game. The more you walk away from accountability, the weaker you become. Find yourself in the grip of life. You can't find yourself by doing nothing. Excellence is not a concept foreign to us. Excellence is in our DNA. Because where we come from, what we represent is far, far stronger than anything we have done. Now, when you think about holy sh my job as a parent, as an entrepreneur, as an athlete, as a speaker, as a whatever you want to be, you've got to get so good at that thing that when people see you do it, you make them experience the most potent human emotion, and that is awe. To get that good is a terrifying journey of self-discovery and confronting who you really are. Because you cannot make change until you acknowledge where you're actually at. A person who thinks all the time has nothing to think about except thoughts. So, he loses touch with reality and lives in a world of illusions. We are so tied up in our minds that we've lost our senses. Time to wake up. What is reality? It isn't material, that's just an idea. Reality is this. Whoever it is that you want to be, no matter how many times you may have failed at attempting to become that person leading up to this point, you can still become that person. You're going to decide who that is. You're going to hold that ideal in your mind and you're going to force yourself to act in accordance. You are going to tell people what you're up to. And if you really have some balls, you're going to tell people that want you to fail. Because that, believe it or not, that's who's going to come to your rescue in your darkest hours of wanting to give up. It's going to be remembering that out there is someone who's laughing at you, who wants you to fail, that's talking behind your back about how you're never going to achieve it, and then imagine how rad it will be when you actually do achieve it. We can't work out without purpose. We need to get into our dress for the wedding. Summertime's coming, so we want to look all good. The biggest purpose in life isn't all it. It's how you respect yourself. How you look at yourself, that's an everyday journey. So every day you should be getting after it. We look at determination, self-discipline. We look at hard work. All these terms is almost like we dread them. So don't look at them as dread and punishment. Look at those words as a lifestyle. Stay hard. You can set yourself a goal that you can attain and there's not gonna be much glory in it to begin with. Because if you're not in very good shape, the goal that you could attain, could attain tomorrow isn't very glorious. But it, it's a hell of a lot better than nothing and it beats the hell out of bitterness and it's way better than blaming someone else. It's way less dangerous and you could do it. 
It's one step on a very long journey. And so it's, it, and it starts to compound on you. So a small step today means, puts you in a position to take a slightly bigger step the next day. And then that puts you in a position to take a slightly bigger step the next day. And you do that for two or three years, man, you're starting to stride. Be kind to yourself. You are actually doing the best you can. Don't beat yourself up. Don't drive yourself crazy. You are actually doing the best you can. There is the darkness and the light, my friends, and you have to play in both. Just because you've gone through it doesn't mean that you are it. Some of you right now, you're listening to me and someone is telling you that you should just give in to that temptation, that you should just give in to that problem, that there's no way that you're ever gonna overcome it, that this has been 10 years or 12 years or 15 years or 20 years or your entire life. But just because it's been your entire life up until this point doesn't mean that it has to be the rest of your life going forward. That the greatest rewards come not from instant gratification, but from sustained effort and from hard work. This is a lesson that's especially true today in a culture that prizes flash over substance, that tells us that the goal in life is to be entertained, that says you can be famous just for being famous. But that's not gonna lead to lasting, sustained achievement. I cannot guarantee the success. I cannot guarantee ever that anyone is ever going to be successful. But I can guarantee that you're going to struggle. Guarantee. 100%, nobody avoids it, that's it. Everybody that ever tries to do anything, and even most of the people that don't try to do anything, are going to struggle profoundly with moving forward. It's just hard like that. And so if you know that the struggle is guaranteed, then you can't allow yourself to waste time to be tormented by the fact that you're not where you wanna be. Make sure you're having fun in the struggle. Figuring out how to struggle well, that's the answer. Winning is not about the trophy and the accolades. It's about the grind. It's about the obstacles. It's about the challenges. It's about the pain. That you endure along the way for that 30 seconds of being able to either stand on the platform, be acknowledged by individuals that are close to you. But when that happens, your mind has to immediately shift back because now you felt and tasted something that you can only get through winning. Are you willing to do it again? We're all looking for something. We're all looking for hope. Hope you can't just have just because you were born with hope. No, we're born with pain. And in our life, my parents always taught me that we have a choice. Either to be angry for what we don't have or be thankful for what we do have. But a lot of us have scars in our brains about lies, bad childhoods, bad adulthood. We're going through. Those scars in your brain, we don't talk about, we hide. Scarring is proof that our past is real. But the one thing we do is we allow to control our lives. And we get off the log. 
Well, it's time to get back on the log and not have those scars to find the rest of your life. Sometimes you gotta fight pain to pain. What the hell are we all waiting for to start attacking life? For the stars to align? Well, guess what? That miracle ain't coming. There is no perfect time to start. You gotta start now with changing your life. believe that everybody has a gift. Every single human out there listening right now, you have a gift. The thing that you have working against you is you have all these other people now. Is that by doing this, you are actually keeping yourself from becoming great. Because the most that you could ever be when you do these things is a watered down lesser version of what someone else is doing, all right? And how do you know that your own style and your own way of doing things that you would develop little by little by little if you would just take little risks, is it gonna be greater than all of those things that you watch? The best work when you're at least motivated. So those days you don't wanna do it, guess what you gotta do? You gotta set the fuck up and do it. Stay hard. One of the things you have to understand about life is everything changes and everything ends. And that kind of sounds heavy on the front end, but it's a truth. If everything changes and everything ends, number one, it should make you appreciate what you have right now. And then my view is what's next is always better. If I make it so, it's my job to make it so. I think passion is the genesis of genius. If you've got enough passion, you're gonna find answers nobody else does, but most people run out of fuel, meaning they get tired, they get exhausted, they get burnt out, they get, you know, the law of familiarity. They're around something so much, they take it a little bit for granted. What I see is the one common denominator of people that are successful over a lifetime is the sustained hunger. Hunger is the number one factor. The secret of every winner Winning in sports, winning financially, spiritually, or any other way. The secret of every single winner is one word. It is the word resilience. Resilience. It is the ability to bounce back. Why? Because everybody goes through tough times. Everybody has failures. Everybody has flops. Nobody goes through life with unbroken success. Nobody goes through life with no problems. Nobody goes through life with it just a breeze and everything's handed to them. There are problems, pains, pressures, difficulties in everybody's life. And the difference between winners and losers is that winners get back up. I do think that that means that the soul participates in something eternal, which is the attempt of being itself to transform what's unnecessarily painful and malevolent into what's good, and that human beings actually do participate in it, and that that's part of the reason that our ancient tradition insists that we're made in the image of God. I don't think that you can live life a life of sufficient profundity to protect yourself from being corrupted by suffering and malevolence without adopting a responsibility that's commensurate with that set of ideas. I think that you either 
orient yourself upward, you know, to the star above the horizon and try desperately to improve the structure of being or you work at counter purposes to it and make things worse. I don't think there's a middle ground. Almost like we're in a trance, like we're sleepwalking through life, that we find ways to cancel out our dreams. And I think that but is a dream killer. That a lot of things that we want to do, a lot of places we would like to go, a lot of things we would like to experience, and we just stop at but. You cannot be great being a lesser version of what already exists. You can only be great when you execute against your own potential and do your own development. And that means getting up there and looking like a clown. If you want to be great, if you want to be one of the best that's ever fucking lived at what you do, you have to understand that it's about developing our own skills. It's about developing our own style. It's about developing our own swagger. It's about developing our own selves. You should pursue your gift. The Bible says your gift will make room for you. Always something there to build a case on why you can't move on, why you can't grow to the next level, why you can't begin to manifest your greatness, why you can't begin to live life on your terms. Always something there to block you, to keep you where you are and keep you from beginning to develop your true greatness. Always some fear. How do we handle it? And I'm saying that if you've been hiding out behind but, if you've been using the fact that you don't have enough money or you don't have the education, take your head on, go get the education. Fear is not real. The only place that fear can exist is in our thoughts of the future. It is a product of our imagination, causing us to fear things that do not at present and may not ever exist. Danger is very real, but fear is a choice. Life is the most brutal endurance sport of all time, and that's what we have to love about it. We have to flip it on its head and love the fact that life continues to attack us. There are no fucking timeouts. We have to know that when we die, we die with some meaning and some purpose in this world. I don't want to live at the level of feelings. You settle too low. You settle for what you see. You settle for what people say. You settle for old templates. You settle for old scripts. You settle for emotions. You can't have a victory without a battle. God is raising you up right now. He's doing it through a process. The level you will settle on is the level that you see yourself. Because what the enemy sent to stop you is not going to have its intended purpose. When that snake bites, don't panic, don't fall apart, just shake it off and keep moving forward. Keep thanking God that he's fighting your battles. Keep thanking him that what was meant for harm, he's turning to your advantage. If you don't stand up and decide to live and survive and move forward and find a way into the next season of your life, you will pass along the same spirit that has tormented you. And that's not just if you're on the edge, that's anybody who feels like quitting. But quitting the thing that God has called you to, it's not small. What is successful and what is failure, the differential are so small. We're talking about seconds. We're talking about, 
you know, reps. We're talking about the finest echelon of measurement that will make or break someone's life to be successful at that moment. And once at that moment successful, that gives a birth of a lifestyle that's unbeatable, second to none. But in order to have that first success, you must ensure yourself that you're giving it all you can today. It's time to stay focused. It's time to decide clubs, partying, trying to fit in and socialize, rub elbows with everybody so people can stop calling you weird. Why are you so antisocial? Because I'm trying to get it. Why are you out there practicing in the hot sun when ain't nobody else out there? Because I'm trying to get it. The more weird you are is a reflection of how committed you are to focusing on your molding and shaping and developing your ideas and your craft so that when it's time for you to make your rounds, you're gonna fly. Between the acting of a dreadful thing, between the moment when you are waiting to do something that you don't want to do, and the first motion, and the moment when you initiate the action, all the interim is like a phantasma or a hideous dream. Life ain't about medals. It ain't about the certificates. It ain't about houses, money, cars, fame, all that shit. It's about scars. So when you get judged with everything you're saying done with, you won't get judged in your medals. You get judged in your scars, those scars show your willingness to get to the side. They show your failures. They show your willingness to start from scratch. They show what you're willing to do to go the distance, to see what you're capable of. So make sure in life, don't be afraid to get scars. Stay hard. You know, everyone has their disabilities, let's say, and I know that some people are far more terribly affected than other people, I'm perfectly aware of that. But the question is, what do you do about that? And what you do is you, you set yourself up on your damn crutches and you struggle up the bloody hill. That's what you do. And you struggle up the hill towards the kingdom of God. That's what you do. Because the alternative is to descend into the abyss. That's the alternative. And then so to say, well, do you believe? It's like, I believe that you should struggle uphill towards the city of God on your crutches. That's what you should do. That's the opposite of the descent into the abyss. So the battle, the struggle, the hesitation takes place in that moment. That moment when we must step into the unknown. That moment filled with fear and horror. And that fear is what causes hesitation, and hesitation causes defeat. Hesitation is the enemy. Hesitation allows the moment to pass, the opportunity to be lost, the enemy to get the upper hand. Hesitation turns into cowardice. It stops us from moving forward, from taking initiative, from executing what we know we must. Hesitation defeats us, so we must defeat it. And it's possible that I can bring my greatness out here in the universe. That I can do what I want to do. It's possible, possible. I can bounce back from adversity and reinvent my life. It's possible, regardless of where I am, that things can get better for me. Get your feet on the ground, step forward. Do not hesitate, do not wait. Go forward and win. Life is not just the passing of time. Life is not just the passing of time. Life is a collection of experiences, their frequency.
and their intensity. Life is not just watching the clock tick away. Life is a collection of experiences. Their intensity, their frequency. You've got to let go and let it happen. Because if you don't, you're going to be all clutched up. You're going to be constantly trying to do what can happen healthily only if you don't try. Existence, the physical universe, is basically playful. There is no necessity for it whatsoever. It isn't going anywhere. That is to say, it doesn't have some destination that it ought to arrive at. Same way in dancing. You don't aim at a particular spot in the room. That's where you should arrive. The whole point of the dancing is the dance. But I've learned the greatest challenge of life is knowing when to break with conventional wisdom. Don't just accept the world you inherit today. Don't just accept the status quo. No big challenge has ever been solved and no lasting improvement has ever been achieved unless people dare to try something different. Dare to think different. I don't tell people that they're okay the way they are. No, I say, no, no, you could be way more than you are. And they're relieved about that, you see, because if you're in a dark and terrible place and someone says you're okay the way you are, then you don't know what to do about that. No, I'm not. I'm having a terrible time and I'm hopeless. You're okay the way you are. Well, then what? That's it? That's it? That's where I am? And what do you want to tell a young person? You're 17. You're okay the way you are. It's like, no, you're not. You got 60 years to be better. And you could be way better. You could be incomparably better across multiple dimensions. And in pursuing that better, that's where you'll find the meaning in your life. And that will give you the antidote to the suffering. You gotta have heart. When you're making these moves, when you're going to work, when you when you executing these dreams, you're doing this for your life. And it ain't nothing more valuable than that. So have your heart when it's time to accept those challenges. Next step, ask yourself, what's blocking you? What's preventing you from acting? Why don't you have the courage to handle that? Why won't you face that? What are you running away from? What kind of avoidance behavior are you engaged in? And so my question to us is this. Every single day in every aspect of our lives and the things we're privileged to do and the people we're connected to. When the situation or the moment does not go our way, because we all know what to do when it goes right. But when God says no, who will you be? But most importantly, who's watching you and who can be blessed by the opposition, the adversity and the challenge that you're facing. Every day of the week, I think we're tasked to make this world a better place. Let's never forget why we exist and why we do what we do every single day. Let's never take this thing for granted and think that alarm clock wakes us up. If you look at life as it is a trial ground, a testing ground for where you need to belong, where you need to go, Suffering is a fact of life. If you look at suffering the right way, it's a great tool to callous your mind.
if you look at it as suffering, woe is me, this is bullshit, God kicking rocks. If you look at it like, okay, test it right now. I get it. Whenever I'm being like depressed, I go through depressed moments, I go, oh, hang on. I'm getting, I'm getting tested. So you have to be aware of all the signals and signs that are, that are being given to you from the world. One of them is if you feel bad, you're being tested. How are you going to perform under that? And that's suffering is a part of life. That time is now. It will always be now. It's time to add your brick to the path of progress. It's time for all of us to move forward. And it's time for you to lead the way. You'll go for it until you understand it. You'll practice it until you develop the skill. Never give up until, however long that is. Step by step, piece by piece, book by book, go for it. Don't miss the chance to grow and resolve that you'll pay the price until you learn, change, grow, become. Then you'll discover some of life's best treasures when you pay that price. Whatever happened last week happened last week. You had a second chance of making your life happen today. Who cares of what they think? You make a mistake, you get up. Today's the day you lay the groundwork down. Today's the day you let motherfuckers know you lay the throw down. Roll up your sleeves, you don't give a f No more. No more. No more. No more excuses. No more, I'll start tomorrow. No more, just this once. No more accepting the shortfalls of my own will. No more taking the easy road. They print money, they don't print time. They don't print opportunities. You can lose money and get it back. You can't get time back. You can't get experiences back. Worship getting your time back with your family. Average people focus on money. The great focus on time, because I can't get my time back. To win. All you have to do is overcome that moment. You see people who do big things and you automatically say, that guy is so lucky, she's so lucky. You don't know that, you're assuming that. Going to work every day for 20 years and grinding your ass off and then becoming a multimillionaire, that's not luck. That's action and reaction. Quit using the word luck, quit believing in luck and start believing in work. Start believing in results that come from your actions. One thing about being in dark places, if you have the courage to stay in them long enough, your eyes will start to adjust to the darkness. Your body and mind will always adjust to more suffering, to more pain. If you want to push harder, know this, your mind quits way before your body does. Everybody in your life will have a turn back moment. No matter who you are, you're going to have such a period in your life where it seems like it's not working. You're going to have doubts, you're going to have a lot of trials and tribulations and challenges. And everybody has what's called a turn back moment. You always have a moment in your life where the direction you're going, you will have to make a decision to keep going or you turn back. The sad thing is, the average person turns back. You, you don't try to build a wall. You don't set out to build a wall. You don't say, I'm gonna be, build the biggest, baddest, greatest wall that's ever been built. You don't start there. You say, I'm gonna lay this brick yeah. as perfectly as a brick can be laid. There will not be one brick on the face of the earth that's going to be laid better than this brick that I'm going to lay 
and you do that every single day, oh. soon you have a wall. You don't have to force yourself or motivate yourself to think negatively, to be depressed, to hate somebody, to want revenge, to want to get back at somebody. Your mind is on automatic. It will do that by itself. No more bowing down to whatever unhealthy or unproductive thoughts float through my mind. No more, no more waiting for the perfect moment and no more indecision and no more lies. No more weakness. No, no more. Now is the time for strength. And through strength and through will and through unwavering discipline, I will become what I want to be. I will become who I want to be. And then, and only then will I rest and say, no more. You don't make excuses for the failure, you grieve it. You feel the pain. You don't brush it off, you don't downplay it. You feel the pain and you don't rush to feel better. To get past it, you gotta go through it. You can't go around your failure, you can't go over your failure, you can't go under your failure, you can't ignore your failure. You need to grieve the failure. I want you to take the craziest dream you ever had. That dream that you were too embarrassed to tell anyone about. And I want you to go after it. I want you to make it a reality. I don't want you to dream, I want you to do. Or I was gonna make a decision to step out of the darkness. You see, when you're in that darkness, you wanna sit there and wait for the light to come. When you're in that darkness, it feels uncomfortable, but you can't wait and sit in that darkness. The only way out is to step forward, to face your fears, to become your own light. But momentum requires you always do the next thing to keep the momentum going. And the reason you get yourself in a passionate place is so that you change your life and the only thing that changes your life is making a decision. So while you're in this passionate state, that's where you make decisions. And my personal question to you is why not you? You've got the brains, you can make decisions, you can study the plan, you can change your life, you can grow immensely in the next few years. You can make your dreams come true. People who win, figure out reasons why they're going to make it. They understand that that's all fucking noise. The first way to get focus is to find purpose. The way to find purpose is you must identify what it is that you have to be purposeful in. 